All right, we're going to go and get started here. Um, thank you all for your patience, and we are so thrilled to have you all with us this evening. Um, so real quick, uh, my name is Dave Walter. I am the Director of Enrollment Management for CU Denver's College of Arts and Media. And why are we here? Uh, we are here because not one, but two of our CU Denver Music and Entertainment Industry Studies uh, Department faculty members were nominated for Grammy Awards this year. So we were thinking about like, how do we share this with the community, this amazing um, honor and news for these two faculty members and the department. And we came up with the idea to do this Zoom session to share a little bit more about the Grammys and what it means to be nominated um, with our prospective students and current students here at CU Denver. Um, so the two faculty members that were nominated for those Grammy Awards are Greg Garrison and Dr. Mark Rabideau. Uh, unfortunately, Dr. Rabideau is traveling and is unable to be with us this evening, um, but we will be rooting for him uh, for the Grammys, and I'm sure the panel will be talking about his nomination as well. Uh, we also have another faculty member who will be on the panel this evening who is on the Board of Trustees and, an ex and the Executive Committee for the Recording Academy and our Grammy U Campus Ambassador here at CU Denver. Uh, so it's going to be an amazing panel. Uh, before we jump into that, though, uh, just a, a little bit about CU Denver's uh, Music and Entertainment Industry Studies Department. It is one of three departments in the College of Arts and Media here at CU Denver. Um, it's an amazing department. So with about 500 undergraduate students, uh, MEIS is one of the biggest and best contemporary and music industry focused music departments in the country. Um, it is routinely on Billboard Magazine's list of top music business colleges, including this past year in 2023. And we were also recently on a list of, by College Gazette of the top 10 colleges for pop music and songwriting. Uh, many other accolades out there, but just two of them, just to show you, this department is well known uh, throughout the country as one of the best for contemporary music and music industry programs. Um, and the faculty are a big part of that. Um, so a little bit about the format, we're going to be using the Q&A, so if you have any questions at all as we go through this, uh, just pop your question into the Q&A, and it could be a, a question for our panel, or it could just be a question about CU Denver or our music uh, department, um, anything that's on your mind, feel free to post it in there. Uh, we have a lot of people um, here to answer your questions, and we do, we love questions. We, we want these questions to be asked, and we'll, we'll get you an answer. Um, all right, I'm going to pass it off to your host and moderator for this evening's panel, uh, Storm Glore. Storm Glore is an associate professor of music business here at CU Denver. Um, he is definitely one of our students' uh, favorite faculty members. He's amazing. Um, so involved in the music industry as well. He just got back from the NAM conference. I'm sure many of you in the music industry know what that is, a, a, a big um, uh, conference out in LA for music industry folks. And then he will be going to the Grammys here this coming weekend. Um, he's a member of the Recording Academy and he's an annual attendee. Storm, how many years is it now that you have gone to the Grammys? Oh, gosh. I was asked that. Oh, it's probably seven or eight. I don't know. It's not oh that God. many. But, yeah, uh, okay, right. <laughs> but yeah, it's fun. It's fun. Yes. Well, well, thank you very much for that introduction, Dave. And I want to second your welcome to everyone joining us here this evening. I am so stoked uh, that that the Grammys are coming up. It's always a, a fun time of the year to see the nominees and, and then go to the awards. But uh, through the years, as Dave mentions, we have a very successful program. And, and one of the reflections of that success is our alums. We've had some Grammy nominees in our alumni body uh, in the past. And this year, though, two colleagues up as nominees. I'm very excited about that. And uh, so I'm, I'm glad we could put this together to get their thoughts and uh, and talk about this. Um, so uh, I've been to the Grammys, you know, uh, as I just mentioned before, and um, I want to I want to segue over to uh, let you get to know our panelists tonight. And we'll start with Anna Frick. Anna, could you tell us a little bit about what you do and your association with the Grammys? And then we'll go to Greg and then we'll go to Christian. So Anna, welcome. Hi, I'm so happy to be here. Thanks for having me. Um, yeah, uh, so um, as David had mentioned, I sit on the board of trustees for the Recording Academy, uh, which is uh, the body that manages um, 
uh, the organization and the Grammys are part of um, part of the Recording Academy. Um, uh, I this will be my third year going to the Grammys. Um, it'll be my it's my fifth year in leadership uh, with the Academy. I also sit on the San Francisco chapter board. Uh, San Francisco is the chapter that represents Colorado. Um, and um, I have worked on, um, so I'm a mastering engineer by trade um, for CU Denver. I am a part-time lecturer in the recording arts department. Um, and um, uh, I, as a mastering engineer, I've worked on several um, Grammy nominated and Grammy um, uh, winning uh, projects over the years. Uh, the first of which uh, was um, about 10 years ago. Uh, the Rise and Fall of uh, Paramount Record, Records, Volumes 1 and 2. They were both nominated um, and won. Um, and uh, then also for uh, an album I worked on, uh, Wooden Wire, a uh, band out of Austin um, in the, the Best Bluegrass album category. Anna, it's always been a pleasure to join you at our local Grammy activities that we've had here uh, and we 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 have quite a few Grammy members here in the Denver and Colorado area, and it's a great networking opportunity. And it's been great to meet folks like you uh, and see folks like you uh, at those events too. Yeah, it's been Greg been Garrison. Fun. Oh yeah, oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> Greg. Yes, sir. Hello. How y'all doing? How are you? Great. Welcome. Tell us about what you're doing and 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 what what's what's up these days with this Grammy nomination. Yeah. Thanks. Uh, well, so my name is Greg Garrison. I'm a uh, senior instructor in the performance department. I also teach a class for um, the music business department, which is fun. I'm teaching that right now. It's a class all about touring, um, which I've done quite a bit of. But um, anyway, yeah, I see instructor. I'm a bass player by trade. Um, I teach music theory. I teach a bluegrass ensemble. And uh, so this Grammy this year, um, we're fortunate enough to receive a, a Grammy nomination in the best bluegrass album category for a band called Mighty Poplar, which is kind of a um, side project band. Um, you know, I, I my full time band is called Leftover Salmon. And then I joined with a couple guys from a band called the Punch Brothers, who I had worked with in the past when I was a member of the Punch Brothers very early on. And then a singer named Andrew Marlin from a band called Watch House, uh, formerly known as Mandolin Orange. Lots of formerly known as stuff going on here. But anyway, we recorded this album um, in 2020 and just released it last year. And uh, yeah, we're really, really excited to, that it's gotten the recognition that it has um, and got nominated for the Grass Grammy. So for me, it's my first official um, nomination, which I'm thrilled about. I have, like Anna, I have worked on some um, I played bass on I think three other projects or albums that were that were nominated in the uh, bluegrass category. Two with a guitar player named Brian Sutton, and then one with a mandolin player named Chris Steely um, back in the day. But yeah, bluegrass album, Grammy. Nice. And you met you mentioned it's a side project. Oh, it great. is a side project. <laughs> it's kind of, I mean, it's I would say you know it's it's becoming a little more than a side project, fortunately. But it's it's yeah. a it's a busy side project and. You know, obviously the recognition um, that we've gotten and and kind of the, um, you know, the excitement we've heard and and felt from the bluegrass community, will it's something we'll continue to do. I don't think it'll, you know, wind up being a full-time project anytime soon, but we're going to continue to make records and, and keep making music together, so. Well, let me tell you uh, that... Uh, Anna and I are, are very familiar with the the nomination process, and and there are so many entries. I mean, it is crazy uh, the amount of people vying for these Grammy nominations. So it, it's a true. Uh, it's it's very. It's 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 just amazing to get recognized. I'm sure Gregory among all of those uh, submissions. So oh yeah, uh, absolutely. It's, absolutely. I mean, you know, I peers, friends, records that I have enjoyed and listened to. And, um, you know, and then I just look at the list of people that were nominated with. I mean, to be on a list with somebody like Willie Nelson, even though Willie Nelson isn't really, yeah. you know, a bluegrass musician, he did record a bluegrass album. And, and to be, you know, kind of in that same pile of artists is, is definitely a, uh, you know, exciting. And, and uh, yeah, I'm thrilled about it. So thank you. Yeah, fantastic. All right. Well, one thing uh, everyone should know is that the Grammy has quite a few outreach programs. And one of the populations that they work with are college students. 
And through the Recording Academy, we have uh, we have set up a Grammy U chapter on our campus. And the Grammy U in the Grammy U program, students are given the opportunities to uh, have uh, uh, sessions like this with very famous artists and producers and things like that, and live in person sessions as well. There's a lot of opportunities uh, to be. Uh, a Grammy U member, and we have with us our campus representative for Grammy U, Christian Howell. Christian, good evening. Hi, everybody. Uh, my name's Christian. Uh, I'm a senior uh, in the recording arts program. I'm also an audition track, which means I also did some performance uh, classes too. And I'm also part of the four plus one master's degree program, which is a program we have here that allows you to uh, get your master's in recording arts in one year rather than uh, two. And it, it's good. It's something good to keep in mind early because uh, you apply in your junior year. So it's just something to keep in mind. Um, so yeah, uh, like Storm was saying, I'm uh, Cam's ambassador uh, to the Recording Academy and uh, the Grammys, and I'm super excited to share some of my experiences. I even got to uh, meet with Storm uh, on uh, Advocacy Day, which is a day we get to meet with uh, uh, local politicians to advocate for artist rights. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Cam is always supportive of anything that anyone is doing. Uh, particularly the Grammy organization to support artists and and make sure things like health care and affordability of housing are top of mind to our legislators. Uh, so I, I had the pleasure of joining Christian and some other local folks to advocate for that. I also want to mention we have a guest here from our admissions office, an admissions counselor here at CU Denver, Emily, Emily Uthier. Emily, hello. How are you? Hello, I'm good. Hi, everyone. Um, like you said, my name is Emily. I am a first year admissions counselor. So I am just here to answer if you guys have any admissions questions about applying, anything like that, or just general CU Denver questions, feel free to ask away. I'm more than happy to answer. Um, he also, also mentioned that he's only been to the Grammys seven or eight times, which isn't that many, but seven or eight more times than I've ever been. So I think that's pretty cool. It's quite a lot, um, but I'm more than happy to be here and answer your questions. Well, thank, thank you, Emily. And yes, please, please share with us if you have any questions. And uh, uh, Emily, I've, I've been around a long time. Um, my hairline shows that. So I've I've had plenty of opportunities. Will someday you'll be telling us about your Grammy experiences. But anyway, I have some questions here uh, for the group that I'd like to throw out, and uh, um, I, I want to reiterate again: uh, Dr. Rabido couldn't be here, uh, and uh, I know he's very proud, and he's looking forward to uh, to uh, attending the Grammys as well. But uh, anyway, Greg, I'll, I'll start this this with you. You you. You've had a successful career. Tell us what it's like to create work recognized by the Grammys and how do you incorpor incorporate students in the process? Yeah, I think, um, I mean, I, obviously to be, you know, the recognition, um, like I said earlier, is is, uh, is amazing. And and uh, as far as the process of creating something that's, you know, Grammy worthy or is going to be considered, it's, it's tough to say. I mean, I think, um, you know, as somebody who's involved with, um, you know, folk and traditional music, um, it's a pretty small community and it's a community of people who love the music, you know, and so I've always gravitated towards peers that um, love the music as much as I do. And so I think when, um, you know, you put people like that together and, and sometimes you can kind of catch fire and, and find the right material to work with and, um, you know, really put your stamp on the music. Um, I will say the team that we had, whether it was from our record label or just the management teams that have been helping us out were pretty instrumental too in getting the word out about the project and and kind of fueling the fire as we released it we had a big um you know a big feature in no depression magazine which was huge and kind of raising awareness about the project and um a lot of things that that helped put it in front of the people who um you know who who would think that it was a cool project and i think also you know this album and this group came at a in an at an interesting time where um there's a lot more interest in bluegrass because of Billy Strings, quite honestly, who's who's become a huge, you know, international yeah. star and is who's selling 15,000 tickets a night, the most ever for bluegrass. And so, um, but I think there's also people who are looking for things that are a little more traditional and and not 
necessarily pushing in the same direction that he is. And so I think people appreciated the maybe the earnestness and the the respect to the for the tradition and and uh, you know that this particular music you know group of musicians put forward. Um, as far as the involvement of the students, honestly, the inspiration for this project for Mighty Poplar um, was happened in bluegrass ensemble when I was teaching, and there was a wow. semester we were working on. Um, music from a band called the Bluegrass Album Band that historically was another super group from the 80s, um, consisting of uh, Tony Rice, who's an amazing guitar player, and Jerry Douglas and Doyle Loft, and just a, a great group. We're, anyway, we're working on their music, and I thought to myself, like, this is great. I love listening to the students play this. I'm so glad they get to share it, but I want to do this, you know? Um, I have been able to play high-level bluegrass, you know, at a lot of times in my career, but it's not something that in the past 10 or 15 years I've gotten to do as much as I wanted to. So literally that experience of being with the students and hearing them play that music and, um, you know, inspired me to then say, all right, this is something I need to pursue um, on my own and led me to start making the calls that led to, you know, now ultimately a Grammy nomination, which is pretty cool. So Fantastic. Fantastic. That's, that's, I did not know that. That's great to hear, Greg. Thanks for yep. sharing that. Anna, We're 282. You, yeah, all right. Anna, you've worked on a lot of Grammy award winning projects and Grammy nominated projects. Uh, tell us what that's been like. And and again, how do you incorporate students in that process? Yeah, I mean, it's um, every project I work on is, is uh, a learning experience in and of itself, right? So um, I think. Um, uh, the Rise and Fall of Paramount Records, that was um, a historical record um, album of um, a box set, really, of 800 songs per volume. So 1,600 songs over the, the course of the two volumes. It was, it was quite a lot of work, um, you know, but, um, uh, you know, I'm constantly thinking about um, uh, how do we how do we bring this, you know, this knowledge um, and this, uh, these these. Um, tools that we use, you know, um, into the students and especially, um, uh, with regard to audio restoration, um, uh, the work that I was doing on that project, um, I now teach a class at CU Denver on audio restoration, really getting the students hands-on, um, with, uh, old media so that we can continue to preserve our history, um, and then bring, bring these, uh, old projects back to life so that they, um, are recognized and celebrated uh, in the way that the Rise and Fall of Paramount Records was. Um, and then that that project also pulled in um, uh, Third Man Records as one of the co-producers, uh, which is Jack White's label. Um, and uh, and I had a lot of fun of it with it. And it also, you know, incorporates a lot of uh, just history of, of uh, the blues. So it was it was really wonderful to uh, dive deep on that. Um, so yeah, I'm I'm always kind of thinking about you know how do we how do we get the the students involved? How do we pass down this knowledge that we're learning uh, every day in the field um, to uh, to the students? And you know, Christian was one of my students uh, in audio restoration this last semester, so he could probably speak to to getting a little hands on with um, with that kind of work. Well, hey, you led me to the perfect segue, Christian. What was your experience like in 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 that sphere? Uh, well, the restoration was absolutely wonderful. Uh, I actually went into the class already kind of uh, working into my master's thesis being around uh, restoration technique. Um, but uh, to be quite honest, I had taken Anna's class uh, previous to that as well, which was called uh, Forging Your Career in Audio. And Anna very much uh, presented presented how how much important community how much important it is like building the network we have around us and how much of it isn't actually about being an insider's club but that so many that all of these people are super approachable and super willing to pass on this information and uh, I'd say like the thing that I think really showed most was uh was how much care and uh, how responsive and how much just effort Anna put into making the classes an amazing experience for all the students. Oh, Both that's fantastic. Fantastic to hear. I'm so glad you had that experience and thank you for sharing that, Anna and and Greg and, and Christian. So uh, uh, I'll start again with you, Greg. Um, what is it about 
CU Denver specifically that gives you and the students, you know, I guess a unique landscape for for the work that you do creating? Yeah, I, th I think, um, you know, the thing that I see is, uh, like Christian said, the community, obviously, you know, of the students mm -hmm. and also the professors, um, just the access that um, students have to people like Anna, people like you, you know, um, and uh, there's so many amazing professors at our school who, who I think, you know, everybody's very understated and very laid back. You wouldn't, you wouldn't know that there's, um, you know, people who are working at such a high level all the time and that you're taking a, a course with them. But once you kind of, you know, peel the onion back a little bit and start asking the right questions of the professors, um, I think you can um, really find that community and, and make inroads into, um, you know, the, the Denver scene as well. I think, you know, just the willingness of people to share their experiences, to share what they know and what they love and to help the students really kind of take the next steps in their career. Um, I know in the performance area, that's something that we all take very seriously is just kind of that mentorship um, process, not just teaching, you know, but, but really sharing our own experiences and show how um, as professionals, we're using the things that we're teaching every day. Um, and, uh, you know, then, then I also love how there was just kind of this cross um, you know, cultural thing that happens between performance and recording arts and music business and, and everybody kind of helps each other out and has experiences in these different worlds um, to pull together a really, you know, I think unique and comprehensive um, atmosphere for the students. Yeah, great, great. Anna, your thoughts on that? Yeah, I mean, um, so I graduated from the program um, many, many years ago. And, uh, <laughs> and so, you know, I never thought that I would be able to find a career um, in this field in Colorado. And I'm really, really grateful that I have because the scene here is, um, it's, it's different. It's much more approachable, as Christian was saying, it's much more open. Um, and so allowing, you know, the students to get immersed in, in that, um, uh, in the scene here um, is really important to building relationships, to um, getting them uh, uh, real world experience, to having them, you know, job shadow and, and that kind of thing. And, um, and then, you know, applying what they're learning, um, you know, in their classes to those positions. Um, I think it's uh, the, the networking opportunities here is um, it's not as, uh, you know, kind of cutthroat as, uh, you know, some of the other, um, uh, more major markets, um, but Colorado has has got such a such an amazing um, scene, both both musically um, and uh, you know then on you know the more uh, technical side as well. And so there's a really great, like Greg was saying, there's a lot of really great interaction there, um, and it's uh, it's it's also just gorgeous. So um, it's <laughs> I, I that doesn't I, hurt. Yeah, right. It doesn't hurt at all. So, um, yeah, I think I think the program at CU Denver, um, you know, being in the heart of Denver there, it's it just uh, it provides a lot of opportunity um, and a lot of access uh, to people who are, are really, um, really committed to, you know, helping bringing up bring up the next generation. Mm -hmm. I, I do want to reiterate your point, Anna. We do have such a thriving music community here in, in Denver and in, in the state of Colorado. Uh, I personally know that from the course I teach in music cities and, and what I see as I travel to other cities and hear as I hear from leaders in those communities. So thank you for bringing that up. But uh, Christian, uh, what are your thoughts? How, how has CU Denver helped you specifically in, in your pursuits? Well, I, I actually uh, see it also kind of as like, it, it's kind of a great model, I feel like, for bringing uh, things to the bigger cities. Like, uh, just uh, just kind of mentioning, uh, I feel like for whatever reason, there there's something about like the scene that hasn't quite exploded. It makes it feel like it's underground and it's indie, but it's just so vibrant and there's so much of it going on everywhere. Um, Let's see. That that's good. Cool. Uh Christian, I'm I'm actually gonna start with you for the next question because I'd really like to hear how how Cam, you know, the College of Arts and Media and you as a representative of Grammy U have connected students to the professional scene and, and the recording academy as well. 
Well, uh, Grammy, you, at least me personally, I've had a lot of experience open it up. I unfortunately wasn't able to make it this year, but I had the opportunity to volunteer for the Grammys and uh, help out for the whole week with a whole bunch of the events going on. Uh, unfortunately, I can't make it this year, but uh, that's one opportunity. We recently had a, a mixer uh, that we held for students to uh, present uh, their uh, their final mixes to some uh, recording professionals here locally, Anna being one of them. Uh, I, in talking to one of my friends in the master's program, uh, Jess, she'd actually reconnected with an artist and uh, actually is uh, working with them to record uh, some of their uh, tracks. So she actually landed a position from that. Mm -hmm. Awesome. But, uh, there's there's just so many ways that uh, Grammy U works on uh, trying to connect people to professional outlets. Uh, all of the events, once you're actually a member of Grammy U, if you're in any of the areas in LA, in Chicago, in New York, uh, you're you're allowed access to them. Uh, they have master classes with people like Jacob Collier. Uh, recently, they had a. Um, a music uh, live stream with Greta Van Fleet about touring and about what it's like to be a live musician. Um, there's just so many, uh, it, it, and honestly, it's all been through uh, the connections I've here that I met at the college that have uh, brought all of this to light. I don't think like, I don't think without uh, people like Anna bringing uh bringing up the recording academy and uh inviting so many cool people uh uh to talk about it uh, i don't think i would have realized how important the the community aspect of it was because i when i was first looking at all of it i was kind of disillusioned to it i saw it as something that was establishment and wasn't necessarily uh i saw it as kind of an elitist group that I wouldn't ever thought I would actually be able to be a part of and be involved in, but obviously that's completely wrong. I, I totally understand. Uh, you know, a, a lot of people can take a step back when they think, oh, I'm in the room with a Grammy board member or someone from the Grammys. And really, they are wonderful people. The, the organization is great. There's so many programs, uh, including Grammy U. That, that connect people and, and build that network. And, and especially as a student, it's so vital for you to be uh, doing that networking. And I believe it, it's only like 50 bucks for a lifetime, right? Or, or uh, and a, and something like that. It's very affordable. Yeah, it's it's fifty bucks for four years. Uh, basically, four years, okay. anyone who's uh, from the ages of eighteen and twenty nine who's actively pursuing a career in music is able to uh, join Grammy U. They also do have a lot of. Uh, they post all of their live streams online on their YouTube channel, so you you have access to all of those just to give you an idea of what's out there. And then once you're actually a member, you can actually go to those in person. You can network at those in person and there's events going all over the place. Our, our, my goal still is trying to get a, um, a, a sound check event, which is basically uh, where we uh, have a, a really big artist uh, and we all get to meet in and see what their sound check is like. And I'd love to do something like that at Red Rocks. Nice, that, let's put that one. on our list. Let's do it. Anna? How have you been connecting students to the professional community and the Recording Academy? Um, I, Christian mentioned my um, careers class uh, that I'm teaching again this semester, and um, uh, you know I'm I'm pulling in industry professionals to to speak with the students um, uh, that are kind of tailored to their their interests. So um, you know if. Last uh, last year, we had a lot of students who were interested in game audio. So I, you know, called up, you know, a fellow uh, board member who it works in game audio and had him chat with the class. And um, and one of my students uh, even did a um, a mentorship with him. And I think they're still in contact. So you know, um, giving them you know kind of access to that kind of thing, um, uh, and then just kind of illuminating. You know, as Christian had mentioned, you know, they're there are, a, there's a lot of misunderstanding about the Grammys and just kind of um, educating about the process. You know, I'm, I'm a firm believer that, you know, if you want to, if you want to see change or if you see something that's not right, you have to understand the system behind it before you can actually affect change. 
Um, and, you know, that's what led me to get involved in leadership at the Recording Academy. And, uh, and through that, I, you know, I, I know probably way too much about the awards process and how it all works and, you know, everything that happens uh, behind, you know, behind the scenes. Um, and so just kind of uh, educating about that process, you know, um, letting folks know that it's accessible, that, you know, um, the Grammys are, uh, is a peer voted award and that's why it's so coveted. Um, it's not based on, you know, chart performance or, you know, um, uh, you know, anything like that or sales or anything like that. It's, it's peers. It's, you know, folks like, uh, you know, those of us here that are, are voting for those, um, for those awards. And so, um, and it's not, um, to be a voting member, you have to be, uh, creatively involved in the process. So it's not record label executives or, you know, producers or managers, it's, or, um, uh, managers or publicists or anything. It's, it's producers, engineers, um, uh, artists, instrumentalists, uh, songwriters, and composers. Those are the only people who are actually voting on the awards. Yes. And, and if, if, uh, if we wanted to go down the rabbit hole of how the awards are done, we'd need another hour and a yeah. <laughs> large board to write on. It's, it's, yes. it's a very complicated process, but Anna, I hear, I hear that you are connecting students through your vast network, and I know that it is a hugely vast network, and I know that the students appreciate what you do. And a lot of our faculty have just so many connections to, uh, to people working in the business that they bring in uh, to visit with our students. Uh, Greg, I'm going to let you address the, the same topic of, you know, how you connect your students to the professional community. But before I before I put you on the spot for that, I want to remind everybody that we'd love for you to put your questions into the Q&A uh, portion of Zoom, and uh, we'll be getting to those questions here soon. So, Greg, how do you connect students to the professional community? You know, there, there's various ways that I do it. I, I'm trying to think of, um, you know, like one direct way. Um, I think Christian mentioned this soundcheck program. Um, the Bluegrass Ensemble that I'm teaching this semester, um, Mighty Poplar, the, the band that I've been talking about, is playing in Denver at the Ogden Theater in, I think, three weeks. And, uh, you know, I'm going to have the Bluegrass Ensemble all come to the soundcheck so they can meet all the musicians and experience what we're doing. And, and uh, you know, in, in that regard, um, I have also had, whether it's private students or, you know, base students or students in Bluegrass or whatever, who are looking for opportunities in, um, in the business because I am involved with, you know, touring bands and, and um, have worked at most of the venues in, in the state. Um, I have directly recommended students that I've had for positions, you know, I, I, and uh, they've gone on to either get internships, you know, places like the Fox Theater, the Gothic, working with the AG, whatever. Um, I have former students who are now on the road with bands, either working, um, you know, as musicians or also doing kind of technical, you know, work um, or merchandise or any of that kind of stuff. So whenever I have a student who um, is looking for that kind of guidance and that kind of mentorship, I'll directly try to help them um, get involved. I think, um, you know, the... Um, what. The other ways um, in general, you know, um, I think like any of the faculty at our school, just, just allowing students to kind of, um, you know, see the work that we put in and, and uh, allow them then to interface with, whether it's guest artists that we're bringing in um, or guest lecturers through my touring class, I'll try to bring in professionals who are involved in the business. Um, I'll always try to bring in musicians to Bluegrass Ensemble if they're coming through town um, that they can interface with. And, you know, at a certain point, it becomes up to the students to take the initiative and take that step, but providing that link I think is a huge, um, you know, part of the process and part of what we're supposed to be doing at, at uh, you know, as professors here. Well, Greg, I know you're so highly regarded in the regional music community that uh, any any student that has your recommendation, I'm sure that's bank for any anybody looking to hire them as an intern or an employee. So that means a lot. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I'm always excited to give my recommendation for the right students for sure. Great. Well, uh, let's turn to uh, the the questions that are coming from our, our visitors here tonight, our guests. Uh, this one is a question from a student. As a performance track student, does the school help you find gigs outside of school to perform at or help you find places to get practical experience? Anyone want to address that? 
Um, um, I can I can address that, I'll, and then I'll let you do it, Christian. Sorry, because you're a student, you've had some direct access with that. I do know I saw that Hunter, um, who um, is in a band called Tire Shoe, there's a link in the Q and A there, and I've I've also had as a student in in one of my classes, um, you know, a, a really really talented um, piano player. Um, as far as you know, give, giving you gigs, is there a list of of concerts or gigs that we can give to the students? Not necessarily, but it's using us as again the bridge to networking with the professionals in the in the uh, region, and uh, maybe you know that's saying like, okay, oh, I know there's another student who has a band that's doing pretty well. Maybe they need an opener, connecting them with that, or saying like, oh, hey, if you're into playing this kind of music, there's a if you're a jazz guitar player, there's a jazz jam that happens on this night at this venue. We'll always try to connect you with those kind of things. Um, there are also sometimes opportunities that pop up. If people will, um, you know, from outside the university or sometimes internal um, asks for a band or for a group, I get a lot of inquiries about the Bluegrass Ensemble from time to time. And if I can't pull the whole ensemble together, I will definitely recommend some of my own students who I feel like could take on that responsibility, um, you know, in order to play like a, a school event or something like that. So, um, yeah, again, while there's not like a class or a direct like, hey, here's the gigs you will get. And here are the people that you can call. We'll always do our best to help um, students help those, you know, find those opportunities. Kristen, did you have something to add to that? Yeah. So um, I, I don't know if this is uh, all the case, and it's not exactly the case in all ensembles. But oftentimes, um, I know in the pop rock ensemble, Andy likes to actually like schedule a real uh, a, a real um, performance at a, mm -hmm. a venue or a bar. So through some of the ensembles, there are definitely opportunities to get it performance if you're looking at it from that experience. Uh, actually, getting like full bands in. Uh, I can't think of necessarily, as uh, Greg was mentioning, there there are uh, a few events and opportunities that kind of come up here and there, but um, I, I think it ends up just being more so just kind of networking and networking with some of the other students that are kind of getting in with uh, getting into uh, getting into venues too. I I will add to that that we have a lot of alums from our program who are out doing the booking for a lot of venues around the state and in this region, uh, and uh, so that helps to have those connections as well. So we benefit from that too. So um, I'm going to go to a, another question here. Um, uh, well, just a second. Is the songwriting program here, does does the songwriting program here teach performance to or strictly songwriting? Is all this that we're talking about part of that songwriting program? Greg, would that be something you yeah, could address? Sir. Yeah, I can I can take that. So songwriting, okay. um, yeah, I I uh from my again from you know speaking from my direct experience, um I tend to get about 50% of the students I have in my bluegrass ensemble come from singer songwriter. Um just because there's a lot of overlap between singer songwriter and traditional um you know American music styles. Um so they get a lot of performance through that. They also get there is a singer songwriter ensemble where they get a bunch of performance through that. Um singer songwriter students do take I know um, David would might maybe be able to speak to the details on this, but they have to take the theory classes and um, ear training and, and all the other, you know, performance related classes that the other students do as well up to a certain point. So it is kind of like, you know, 50-50 performance degree in addition to songwriting. So you're not just, you know, writing poetry all the time. That would be a whole different thing. Um, and uh, yeah, some of the, the best students that I've had, quite honestly, in the performance area have come from singer-songwriter. And that singer songwriter program has really taken off. It's a it's a quickly growing part of our program. Uh, I will add that as well. Um, so uh, we have with us an international student from Ghana. Uh, very exciting to hear that. Uh, first of all, and um, and uh, I just want to welcome them, and uh, and and maybe we can address their question elsewhere. But that's so super cool that. Uh, they are joining us this evening. Um, Liam Waters asks, what would a successful student in the music business program look like? What kinds of things would they engage in on and off campus? Um, uh, I'll certainly let you all ch chime in. Again, what would a successful student in the music business program look like? But I, I certainly have my five cents 
Uh, what what are y'all's thoughts on it? I think okay. you should you should be the one who let I'll them know jump storm, in considering, then. <laughs> considering you're the you're the music business man on campus. Yeah. Okay. Well, um, uh, so I would say that uh, th th I'll touch on a few of the things brought up this evening. In fact, I would say that the the an, a, an engaged music business student would be one who's willing to collaborate with all of the other folks in their their the class, whatever the class may be, uh, and and uh, thinks about building that network while they're here. I would say that a, a successful music business student in our program uh, dedicates themselves to being open. The music business has so many tracks in terms of careers uh, and so many opportunities out there that uh, we've seen students who start off here as, you know, perhaps piano performers. Uh, in fact, I could share with you that the, one of the vice presidents of Warner Publishing was a music, a, a performance major, and kind of opened themselves up to what else they might find. And they learned about uh, uh, copyright and publishing and and uses of music. And now they, are, they became one of the top music supervisors in the industry, started as a piano major. So I would recommend, you know, or I would say that uh, our successful music business students really open themselves up to the possibilities, all aspects of the business. We make it a point to be sure we give, we offer classes in, in every aspect of the business that will help someone be successful in the industry. And, um, and, and I think they benefit from that. There you go. I can um, say- uh, Go ahead, I Christian. I just wanted to say too that um, I actually uh, saw a panel that was done by uh, Anna and a few other um, uh, Grammy and recording uh, recording academy members, and one of my favorite parts was all of the information that they were saying and talking about was things that I had heard in my music business classes. I just think it's important to highlight that what professionals actually are saying and doing is what our teachers here are actually teaching, and that's because that's not always the case. So well, thank you for that testimonial there, Christian. I we we do uh, we do make it a point to keep our classes very cutting edge. I mentioned earlier the Music Cities class. It was the first one in the entire world, uh, and and is a, a very popular class. And and we've made some inroads in being recognized for that unique program. We offer a class called Women in the Music Industry. Uh, we we are going to be offering a Taylor Swift class uh, this year, uh, so we we make it a point to keep current and keep on top of things and 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 pass on the most current knowledge and and skills that that our students are going to need. So thank you for reminding me of that, Christian. You know I'm gonna I'm gonna switch it back to the Grammys for a bit and and get some prognostications. Here is there uh, those of you, uh, uh, Anna, Greg, and Christian. Are do you have any picks? Do you have any favorite picks, or do you have any predictions for the Grammys this weekend? I just really want Janelle Monet to win Album of the Year. She's she's among a tough group of contenders. Oh, I uh, know. Album of the Year, the most coveted award. Uh, she's with Taylor Swift, Olivia Rodrigo. Um, John Batiste, it, it's, it's a great group. So it, it would be great if Janelle could pull that out. Yeah. Any other, any other predictions? Guess? Uh, Mighty Poplar for Bluegrass. No, well, <laughs> yeah. yeah, of course we'll be cheering. <laughs> I, I will definitely be standing up and yahooing, uh, for them to win, uh, for sure. And, and, um, Mark, Dr. Rabideau's, uh, 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 nomination is in the classical category uh, definitely uh, ho hoping for the best there. Um, so uh, we have a question here, uh, and I think it's being answered. So I'll I'll pass on that one. So uh, uh, besides that, anything you're looking forward to from the Grammy telecast itself? Any anything you think might happen, or we'll see? We always see some great collaborations. I will tell you that much, and and that is by design. The uh, the Grammy telecast uh, is known for putting together artists you'd never think you'd see playing together 
on stage for for performances, and that's always a, a sight to see. Uh, but anything else? Any other thoughts on the Grammys this weekend? I uh, I wish I was going to be able to attend. I've actually I have a gig in uh, Park City, so I won't uh, unfortunately be able to be there. But I will be watching the the webcast, and I'm thrilled mm -hmm. that they're actually webcasting. You know, I think a lot of people don't understand that. Um, the the kinds of categories that that myself or um, Anna, you know, the work and the music that we're involved with a lot of times, um, and actually, what is it like? Ninety percent of the the actual awards happen um, at the earlier ceremony yeah. that happens in the afternoon during the day, and it's not telecast. So those are all the ones you see on the little uh, you know scroll on the bottom of the screen. So um, I will be watching, you know, probably jump on a Zoom with with my wife and kids and and see if uh, if see what happens. You know, prepare myself for for the great disappointments in life, but yeah, that's part of it. Um, but uh, yeah, it should be, it should be very exciting. Um, I definitely pitched to our management to try to, you know, have us and Willie Nelson collaborate, but it didn't get anywhere. Um, you know, maybe I should have, awesome. I should have, I should have, uh, I should have aimed higher. Maybe it should have been mighty popular with Taylor Swift or something. <laughs> um, but we'll save that for next time. You never know. And uh, uh, Greg, you mentioned getting ready for disappointment. I want to remind you uh, what we hear a lot, but it is so true. Uh, just to be nominated for a Grammy is huge. Oh, it absolutely. Is, yeah. It is absolutely huge. Yep. Uh, everyone's a winner. And that's that's very true. Oh, yeah. And, and then, uh, you know, like like Anna mentioned, just the peer, the fact that it's a peer, um, you know, peer voted award i mean it's it's huge i remember when we, when i found out about the the nomination it was definitely one of the you know the high points of my career um and uh you know by i'm not a i'm not a highly emotional person but it definitely brought a couple of tears to my eyes just understanding that you know we had been recognized by um you know people that i have so much respect for um in the industry and to be recognized yeah like you said i i'm you know thrilled to even be in the consideration and it would be icing on the cake to uh to you know to have one of those trophies sitting in my living room but uh if not it's it's been an amazing experience just the journey to to get to to get to here you know yeah for sure for sure anna any light you could shine on you know the p and e we can't forget that we talk about artists being nominated but there are producer the the producer of the year award in fact pretty stiff competition this year but there are other people associated with recordings that are you know, part of the nomination and part of the awards process, right? Any any light you want to shine on that for our participants tonight? Yeah, I mean, um, so you mentioned uh, p and &E, which stands for Producers and Engineers. Um, so if you are a producer or engineer, you're in a um, kind of um, uh, exclusive little club within the Recording Academy and, you know, the the P&E wing. Um, I also sit on the steering committee for the P&E wing right now. Um, uh, they do a lot of things um, like set set forward uh, set forth technical guidelines and that kind of thing. Um, uh, I'll tell you, uh, a good colleague of mine, um, uh, Michael Romanowski, is nominated for um, four uh, four albums. <laughs> in the, of the five nominees, he's not he's got four nominations in the immersive audio category. Um, so I I think um, he's I've been you know, watching him for so long, he's setting so many standards in the immersive space because it's kind of the wild west. Um, so have him, to have him be recognized, it, it really um, gives some legitimacy to that um, that emerging format um, and, and really setting, um, setting a standard, um, which I think is huge. Um, so yeah, I'm. Uh, that's a category that I, I think is uh, you know one of those kind of watch the space um, because the um, the people you know working in that space it, it, that's that's complicated work um, you know and same with a uh, producer um, you know producer of the year there's also songwriter of the year um, both of those categories are now part of what's now the general field so it's recognized uh, so all all the voting members are able to vote on that. Um, on those two awards, which I think is huge to recognize uh, the craft behind, um, you know, behind the artistry um, uh, when it comes to songwriting, producing, creating uh, really phenomenal records and songs. Uh, there's so many more people involved. So uh, those are really, really phenomenal categories. And I would say that's one thing that, you know, as an attendee of the Grammys, it, you're always reminded that the village it takes to uh, create the record. Uh, Dr. Rabideau, in fact, 
is nominated as uh, he's the producer of this Grammy nominated piece. And uh, you, you realize all that goes into it. There's even there's even a liner notes and packaging award. There's just it, it's a reminder of how much work goes into putting out a record, uh, putting out a, a recording of any type of any genre. And, uh, you know, I think that's something I'd, I'd certainly like to bring home to us aspirants to the music industry these days is, as I, I think I said earlier, there's there's so many opportunities in this business. There's so many parts of the live music industry. There's so many parts of the recording industry. There's so many parts of the marketing industry and and the music and films and television and video games. It just goes on and on. So. Uh, we're very proud to be a program that's that's again on the cutting edge and is a billboard. Uh, Billboard's a top music industry trade magazine, and they recognize us as one of the top programs. So, so uh, we're very proud to to uh, to see our alums uh, and our students succeed in the music industry, and uh, perhaps the best testament to to the value of our program. Well, that being said, we're we're about to draw to a close, and and uh, we may not have uh, have gotten to your question tonight, or you may have a question that arises later uh, in in the next five minutes or in the next five days. But we certainly hope to see you on our campus. You know, this 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 spring as a visitor, this fall as a student, if possible, and um, we certainly uh, want to thank you for joining us tonight and. Uh, we do, we're going to post here in a sec some contact information for those questions that come up. And there it is. Look at that. Uh, we we certainly want you to reach out. And I, I don't want to speak for Anna and Greg or any of our uh, faculty, for that matter, and say that we are also accessible uh, if you have any questions about what uh, what we do and, and uh, the courses we teach or, or whatever. And I don't, I'm not going to put Christian on the spot either, but if you want a student perspective, if you get to visit our campus, talk to the students, uh, uh, but uh, you can reach out in any way, but we have a great team that will assist you. Um, is there anything else, team, to close us out? I guess not. Uh, but uh, uh, I, again, want to thank everyone who uh, participated in this. Uh, those guests tonight, if you'll give a hand virtually or however you'd like in the chat box or whatever, and thank our panelists uh, for sharing their thoughts tonight, we'd appreciate it. And then I know I represent our team here in saying we're so glad you took the time out of your evening to join us, and, and we hope you found the information beneficial. And we look forward to hearing from you. Thank you. Bye, thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much.